Hey everyone, my name is Royce. Unless you've been around the channel before, then you probably don't know that I'm a medical student and I don't pay a single dime for medical school. As a matter of fact, I get paid to attend medical school. I get paid a stipend of $35,000 per year. So medical school for me is completely free and by the time I graduate, I will have no student debt and I'll have accrued some wealth from my small income. So you might have a lot of questions and the point of this video is to show how exactly this is possible and how you can do this too. No, this is not some sketchy scholarship that you apply to on some sketchy website. This is a perfectly legitimate, you know, well-defined career path that people follow in medicine. So the thing that I'm talking about is getting an MD PhD. That is four years for getting your MD degree and four years for getting your PhD degree. So the downside is that I'm going to be a medical student for a very long time. But the plus side is that medical school tuition, which averages 60 or 70 thousand per year depending on the school is completely free for me and in addition I get a stipend of $35,000 per year. So I'm very fortunate to not have to pay tuition statements and worry about FAFSA every year. And so I wanted to make this video because uh, if you've been following my channel then you know that I personally did not know about what an MDPhD was until my sophomore year of undergrad and that was just a year before I ended up applying. And so I hope by you watching this video at home that you can learn about what an MD-PhD is a lot earlier than I did. And so if you're interested in becoming an MD-PhD, you can make that dream closer to a reality by having more time to prepare, having more time to think about your application. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what career paths you can go into with an MD-PhD. So if you get an MD or a DO, you'll be in private practice or at an academic hospital and you'll be practicing medicine all the time. You'll be seeing patients for 100% of your time. However, if you get an MD-PhD, you're going to be what's called a physician scientist. Um, other people like to say clinician investigator, but I think that's just way too many syllables. One, you're going to be a clinician, spending 20% of your time treating patients in whatever specialty you want to do. And two, you're going to be a scientist, spending 80% of your time leading a research lab as a PI. So I'd say some of the biggest distinctions for doing the MD-PhD path versus the MD path is that the MD-PhD path tends to be a little more competitive. MD-PhDs also get paid less in the long run, and that's because treating patients tends to make a lot more money than doing research. And so if you're an MD, spending all of your time treating patients, you get paid a lot. But if you're an MD-PhD, spending some of your time treating patients and some of your time doing basic science research, you'll probably get somewhere around a weighted average of a physician salary and a scientist salary. That being said, it is pretty gratifying to be a scientist, and you can be at the forefront of scientific discovery in the medical field. So now I'm gonna shift gears a little bit and talk about how you can apply for MD-PhD programs. Applying MD-PhD is exactly the same as applying to MD programs. You use the AMCAS, you send your primaries, you send your secondaries, and you go through the interview process as well. But there are some key differences. You're gonna have two extra essays on your AMCAS primary. The first is an essay about why you wanna do an MD-PhD. And if you're applying MD-PhD, you should probably have a good answer for this. And the second is your significant research experiences essay. And this is just, you know, a paper talking about, you know, all the boring details about your projects. The secondaries that you get from different schools might be a little different as well. So they might ask you questions about, you know, what are some PIs that you're interested in at our school? And during your interview day, you're going to have more interviews than MD applicants. So if you're applying MD, then you'd probably only have like two interviews, you know, one from a faculty, one from a student, depending on the school. And if you're applying MD PhD, then you're gonna have you know, maybe up to five interviews. And that's gonna be with potential PIs that you can work with at the school. So now comes the final question, should you get an MD PhD? And I think in the future, I'm definitely gonna make a video that goes in depth. But to briefly answer the question here, I would say that do not do an MD PhD purely for the money. Even though you don't get tuition and you get a stipend during your training years, it's not worth it, I think, compared to the reduced salary that you get as a physician scientist. And also if you're thinking in terms of lifestyle, this may or may not be the career path for you. And that's because science is inherently very competitive and very time consuming. So it's very hard not to grind during your assistant professor years because you need papers and you need grants to keep your research career afloat. But I will say, consider getting an MD PhD if you really do like basic science research. As an MD PhD, you're in a unique position where you're at the intersection of basic science research and bedside translation. And so I think this career path is very gratifying for particular individuals like me. And that's because on one hand you can treat patients and that in itself is a very fulfilling experience. As a physician you can help patients and improve their lives in a way that you really can't in uh, any other career path. And as a scientist you're at the edge of discovery and so that gives you a lot of you know freedom to explore where you want to explore, 
uh, to discover new therapies or to discover new you know, disease mechanisms. And you also get a lot of intellectual stimulation. So throughout your career, you'll never be bored. So that's basically all I wanted to say for this video. If you enjoyed it, if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks and I'll see you later.